Sup everybody, it's D's World, got another reaction. I'm about to react, um, Mel Gibson, Hollywood, or exposing Hollywood, my bad, said that wrong right now. Alright, so, you know how it is right there for that new movie, you know, Sound of Freedom, I watched it, uh, last week, and that movie was good, really, really good, for his, um, was it, Shields, um, Trafficking, man, that was a very emotional movie to watch see kids things like that and i was looking at all that statistics it's crazy it's like well it's like a 150 billion dollar right there in the world and then i was looking at some other one it's about like over two point something a two point something million of kids that get kidnapped for sex trafficking a year i'm like damn that's a lot ah oh, man the movie was that was a good movie, man. But I can see now when they're talking about like uh, all the Hollywood and you, you see all the stuff that some theaters there's mess. They have some kind of things that messed up, you know, just like the the lights don't work or other things that kind of way, or the screen doesn't work or it's just hot or whatever. So it's crazy. But all right, let's just go straight into. It. I want to see about this. Mel Gibson, remember he did. A while ago, he did the um, the um, the Passion of Christ. You know, a while ago, I think like almost twenty years now. You know, I think he's gonna do um the second one after. You know, and it's gonna be right there next year. But yeah, it's gonna be pretty interesting to watch this. So let's go straight into it right now. Let's see because they say Mel Gibson he knows some stuff that Hollywood don't like him. So hey, let's go straight into it. First time I really came on. Let's go a little louder with this. There we go. You know, I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. You're seven years old and someone is stroking you. It feels good. Our future is our future. Now, the first step in eradicating this crime is awareness. The latest buzz in Tinseltown is all about Mel Gibson's explosive revelations in the film Sound of Freedom. Brace yeah, yourselves movies, as Mel movie. pulls back the curtain on the dark underbelly of Hollywood's elite, exposing their alleged involvement in the scandalous world of illicit human trade. And guess who's caught right in the middle of it? None other than the iconic Oprah Winfrey herself. So what exactly did Mel say? Our future is our children. Now the first step in eradicating this crime is awareness. In the glitzy world of Hollywood, where controversies and scandals are the talk of the town, it's surprising how one particular movie has managed to fly under the radar. Sound of Freedom, directed by Alejandro Gomez Monteverde, delves deep into the dark underbelly of illegal human trade, revealing the shocking methods and- Hey man, that is so sad for little kids. Because I was looking at- if you watch the movie, you've seen them, there's some was six years old, five years old, and- Dude, I was like, man, that just, just hits you in your heart if you have a heart. If you don't have a heart, mom, man, I don't understand how you don't have a heart, man. This is crazy. By the elite to lure innocent victims into their sinister rings. But what's even more intriguing is the lack of buzz, press coverage, and endorsements surrounding this important film. Why is starring a big actor, an established director, and being promoted by Mel Gibson is not being shown in cinemas. It seems the message of the movie I don't think he doesn't do this, to be honest. ...has ruffled some powerful feathers. Sorry. Why, you ask? Well, in the movie, it's... former action star Mel Gibson takes the lead role in Sound of Freedom, portraying the true story of ex-government agent Tim Ballard, who leaves the government to establish Operation Underground Railroad, dedicated to rescuing children from the clutches of illegal human trade rings. The film sheds light on the horrors of this abhorrent industry, aiming to raise awareness and mobilize action against it. However, despite the urgency of the topic, major streaming platforms like Amazon, Netflix, and Hulu shockingly rejected the movie, refusing to give it a platform for worldwide exposure. It's a puzzling move, considering these platforms are often at the forefront of promoting socially conscious content. Could it be that's that the crazy. film's explosive... Damn, that's crazy. Damn, shoot, let's go back a little bit. They don't want to, man, because it's going to let them look bad. Oh, well, it has to look bad, though. They just, you know, when you look at Amazon, not Amazon, but I would say, like, Disney, they really changed how it is from the last five years or actually three years all the way to right now. 
everything else, it was cool. I mean, yes, they had some stuff like, all right, whatever. But now it's pushing the the left side way more, man. And it's just, it's just too much, man. I don't understand why they're doing it. And it's like if you look right there on Disney Plus, they have like pride because it's all that side and, and that little kid's things, man. And it's just pushing it with it. Now, that's not even cool. I don't think it's not cool. That's me. Home for some, adding fuel to the fire. Celebrity voices that are typically quick to endorse woke causes have remained eerily silent about Sound of Freedom. It's as if the Hollywood elite have collectively turned a blind eye to a film that exposes their own industry's dirty secrets. The lack of support from these influential figures raises questions about their true commitment to social justice and human rights. But the intrigue doesn't end there. Sound of Freedom was initially in the hands of Disney, which acquired yeah, the rights it. after its merger with 21st Century Fox in 2019. However, the House of Mouse mysteriously shelved the project, leaving many to wonder why. Mm. Whispers in the industry suggest a more sinister motive behind the rejection and lack of promotion for Sound of Freedom. Accusations circulate that the likes of Disney, Netflix, and Amazon Prime deliberately avoided obtaining the rights to the film to allegedly prevent the truth about child AB and the illegal trade from reaching global viewers. Man. You three, why? Why? Could it be an attempt to cover a specific group of industry elites? You see these so-called industry big shots who wield immense power behind the scenes of Hollywood have always presented themselves as philanthropists with hearts of gold. But what if their true intentions were far more sinister than we could have ever imagined? Imagine that stuff. That couldn't be the reason for why so-and-so was acting like could it? Mm. And then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track. Mm. One such group of elites is the Good Club. This is the creme de la creme of global elites. According to The Guardian, this exclusive group of billionaire philanthropists holds top secret meetings right in the heart of New York City. Mm. Names like Bill Gates, George Soros, Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, David Rockefeller, and Ted. Why are you not investing in tax links? My bad. No, seriously. Why are you not investing into one of the Ted Turner often graced the guest list, but also go back just a little bit. George Soros, Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, David Rockefeller, and Ted Turner often graced the guest list, but also lesser known but equally wealthy figures like Eli and Edith Broad also make appearances, Man. making us wonder what really goes on behind closed doors. Now, one name that sticks out is Oprah Winfrey. We all know her as the billionaire Oprah. show host and... To be honest, when you think about Oprah, okay, everybody used to watch this show, uh, you know. It was big. Everybody watched it. But there was multiple people that... I remember one time, I think it was um, like um, Ice Cube when he did that movie, um, The Barbershop. I think it's the second one or the first one, I forgot. But he did basically everybody that's in the cast except for him. It's like, the heck? He's the main person. How can you put right there, man? It doesn't make no sense inside your damn show to do that. As he's the main person. He's the producer. He's all that kind of stuff. He, didn't even, he wasn't even in it. So, uh, I, yeah, there's some other people that's like this. Like, damn, man, what the heck's the matter with this dude? Uh, what, what the hell's the matter But, like, let's go. Philanthropy. Yeah, and then, okay, and then she... We know her one friend she does. I forgot her name, though. The one that's like all those, the, the, uh, well, you know, her friend, whatever, that, that works right there. And, um, oh, snap. Her friend that works right there, the, the news thing, when they have all the one-on-ones and all the stuff, when she all, her friend, her, her friend, when she like trying to talk so bad to Kobe and then she and then she talks so bad to Michael Jackson all the time. Still, remember she did that thing for uh, for those two people to talk about the Michael Jackson thing. Those grown people when they both said Michael Jackson never did nothing. It's like freaking. <laughs> well, he died like over ten years later, and then they're gonna come over there and say some. But then and, and then but she ha hangs out with some people that he's like pedophiles and stuff. It's like there's a man with you. Over, it's like yeah. The only thing when you see all these people right there, she just has so much power. Like she don't even freaking. I don't even care like that, bro. Larger than life, right? Wrong. Buckle up. Let's see. Because there's a side of Oprah that she'd rather keep hidden, and it's Come far on, let's from go. admirable. Let's see. Is it possible that the Queen of Talk has a darker side that she doesn't want us to see? Well, the highly anticipated film 
Sound of Freedom, is set to expose the shocking methods used by the Hollywood elites to trap innocent victims. While the movie doesn't explicitly name Oprah, her alleged connections to notorious figures like Harvey Weinstein cannot be Now, right now. You see, despite Weinstein's long-standing reputation as a predator, Oprah maintained a close relationship with him. Speculation arose that she may have even encouraged actresses to work with him, leading to accusations of her complicity in the alleged misconduct. These allegations conflicted with Oprah's public persona as a champion of women's empowerment and a supporter of the hashtag MeToo movement. Some argued that her association with Weinstein demonstrated a double standard in her treatment of accused individuals. And this is not the worst of it all. One of Oprah's most notorious moves was her decision to feature the self-proclaimed healer and criminal extraordinaire, John of God, on her show. Picture this, yeah. a Brazilian healer who claims to possess spiritual powers and uses them to purportedly heal people. Sounds like something out of a Hollywood movie, right? Well, damn, that's like some voodoo stuff, huh? I'm a little nervous now. What am I watching? In this case, reality turned out to be even stranger than fiction. John of God, as he came to be known, managed a healing facility in Brazil where vulnerable individuals sought solace and spiritual guidance. Little did they know that the man they were entrusting their well-being to had a dark and sinister side. It wasn't long before the truth about John of God's criminal activities came to light. Reports of SA and AB began to emerge, painting a chilling portrait of a man who shamelessly took advantage of those who sought his help. But what's truly mind-boggling is the role that Oprah played in catapulting John of God into the limelight. By featuring him on her show, she bestowed upon him a stamp of legitimacy, giving him access to a wider audience and inadvertently endorsing his criminal behavior. This eyebrow-raising incident took place back in 2010 during one of Oprah's attention-grabbing segments titled, Do You Believe in Miracles? Man, Oprah, what's the matter with you? See, come on, but we gotta boycott the right thing like this, man. We gotta, we gotta, we should be doing that a long time ago. I always had some something that is like, it's, I never feel something was, oh, no, 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 I say that, but my bad. I feel everything was a little bit off when I'm thinking about to Oprah. I would say ever since when I was young, too. Because I don't know, she looked like fake and stuff anyways. But to me, it was me. But everybody's like, oh, she's a great person. Oh, yeah, I read the book. Read the book. Yeah, everybody, I'm going to give everybody a car. Yeah. Like, everybody's like, oh, yeah. Look, we got a car from her. Yeah. Oh, man, we strong women. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is this. But I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, man, I don't know, man. She just looks like a fake to me. It always did to me. Little did her audience know that the miracle they were about to witness was the rise of a criminal under the guise of a spiritual healer. Anyway, while Oprah did attempt to salvage her reputation by expressing empathy towards the brave women who came forward with allegations against John of God, it's clear that her involvement had already left an indelible mark. The damage had been done, and the sinister connection between Oprah and this criminal healer would forever be etched in the annals of scandalous history. Damn. And as if this is not bad enough already, Oprah Winfrey's Leadership Academy for Girls in South Africa has always been a hotbed of controversy. In 2007, Oprah opened the Leadership Academy for Girls, inspired by Nelson Mandela and her promise to him. Little did anyone know that this venture would become a hotbed of controversy, stirring up whispers and skepticism from day one. As soon as news broke about Oprah's ambitious project, the South African government wasted no time in expressing their disdain. They criticized the exorbitant cost of the school and questioned its relevance in a country plagued by poverty. But did Oprah let that deter her? Not a chance. With an air of grandiosity and a touch of arrogance, she forged ahead, creating a glitzy institution that boasted luxurious salons and extravagant gyms. And that's when the conspiracy theories began to take flight. Whispers spread like wildfire, with many suggesting that the lavish school served as a front for something much darker. Illegal human trade. Mm. <laughs> I'm listening. It's going to come right there. And it did. No, like, ramp Oprah, Oprah, man, that's how, maybe that's how come you got all freaking rich, man, you just, man, you just sign with the devil, man. The opulence and extravagance raised eyebrows and fueled suspicions that innocent young girls were being groomed for a life of exploitation. While no concrete evidence ever surfaced to support these scandalous claims, 
It's impossible to deny that the whispers added a layer of intrigue and suspicion to the already controversial Academy, but it didn't stop there. Scandals and controversies soon plagued the institution, exposing a dark and seedy underbelly that Oprah had fought so hard to keep hidden. Mm. One shocking incident involved an employee named Virginia, whose role involved overseeing the dormitories. It was discovered that she had engaged in highly inappropriate conduct with not one, but multiple students between the ages of 13 and 15. Mm. These vulnerable young girls, handpicked by Oprah herself, fell victim to the very person entrusted what? with their care. It was a stain on Oprah's reputation and a disturbing reflection of the Academy's inner workings. Desperate to salvage her image and protect the brand she had built, Oprah swooped in with a team of investigators to uncover the truth, but the darkness didn't dissipate with Virginia's scandal. Less than two years later, mm. another controversy erupted within the walls of Oprah's Academy. Disturbed Hold on, let's go back a little bit for them. Oh, that's a while ago, huh? Man, that's like freaking, like what, 16 years or something? Damn, with that's Virginia's a while. Scandal. Less than two years later, another controversy erupted within the walls of Oprah's Academy. Disturbing revelations emerged, shedding light on a culture of violence and intimidation among the students. It was revealed that a 15-year-old girl had been pressuring victims into silence, coercing them not to report the physical altercations to their parents or authorities. Shockingly, seven students Dirty. were suspended for their involvement in intimidating behavior and inappropriate acts. Despite Oprah's attempts to address these issues, it seemed that the problems were deeply ingrained within the Academy's very foundation. Meanwhile, fans have not been shy about expressing their disgust for the alleged actions of these Hollywood elites. One fan commented, She's a handler, and I'm happy to see more people are becoming aware of the toxic person she truly is. Anyway, that's it for this video. Man, that is crazy. Shh, nah, man, Oprah... Dude, all no bad. By. All bad. Man, <laughs> see, Hollywood, Hollywood is just on another level, man. It's like too much. It's it's way too much, you know? Like, there's, I told you, they pushing so much in movies and shows and all that stuff. And it's, to me, I it's not even cool watching them sometimes. It's like, dude, what the hell are y'all watching all the time, man? This is true, especially little kid stuff. And then watching this right there, you know, like, uh, the trafficking right here and then you go right here for this oh my goodness this is freaking bad all bad right now and I don't, I'm, I'm speechless for a second I, I actually I am okay so I want okay I want y'all to hit me on the comments tell me what you think about this you know like what you think it's like fake or some well you see that right there for the movie right there they're trying to say that oh it's a fake it's fake they didn't really happen like, dude, come on, that stuff already happens all the time. It's all, it's it's like the facts is everywhere. It's like when you, when you see a movie that's true, and then all that kind of stuff, people are like, oh, it's fake, it's it's it's, um, it's fake. And the guy came out and even said it too, but then if you go to those kind of movies they do, and they say it's based on a true story, and it's, it's fake as hell. You can even tell, like, man, you even know history, and you can tell, you can tell they just like, Exaggerate, exaggeration, or they put something on it that doesn't make no sense at all about history that you know, and then everybody's like, oh man, blah blah blah, and then they, and then like all the, I don't know, Hollywood and all the critics, they're like, oh, it's a pretty good movie. I'm like, nah, I don't know, man, the movie's kind of bunk. But anyways, let's tell me what y'all think. Like, subscribe, show love, and also hit me in the comments, man. Tell me what you think. Think she's, she's evil? Think that this is a. Uh, it's, it's, it's true or do you think that oh they're just trying to put it down tell me all right like